Ratings. I am Shad, and castles are awesome. Lots of people like castles. I know I certainly like, but actually I probably like castles a little too much. And I love seeing castles employed in movies, TV shows, video games. I review them, I enjoy them, it's great to see. One of the interesting things about how castles are employed in popular, you know, media today is that they are employed in, well, one, fictional settings, but in addition to that, they are employed in fantasy settings. One of the most common points or questions that arise from my castle reviews is, but Shad, this is in a fantasy setting. I mean, how effective is this castle going to be against fireballs and dragons? Well, that is a very good question. Let's answer it. Magic and other fantasy elements really do just totally mix up the efficacy of what a castle would be able to achieve in such a setting. To the point where you really do have to ask yourself, is there even a purpose to having a castle anymore? To begin, let's look at magic. Would castles still be useful in a world where magic existed? And after thinking about it, boy, it really does depend on what the magic can do. If I was to uh, just do a bare, you know, level basic kind of analysis, let's think about fireballs. That's one that a lot of people bring up, because fireballs, I'll just be able to destroy the walls. Really? Okay. Uh, the reason why I say this is because when it comes to solid rock-like structures, whether it is stone or concrete or other things like that, explosions only have a proper effect when they have penetration. And so when they want to blow something up that is made of rock or concrete, they will drill a hole, put the explosive in, and then kaboom. Without that, the explosion will only do some very surface damage and indeed, won't do serious damage at all. So in regards to fireballs, it very much depends on the power of those fireballs and when the explosion takes place. If the explosion happens as soon as there's an impact, I actually feel that those fireballs are going to do very minimal damage against a castle wall. But that is just looking at, you know, fireballs, because the, the issue that we're running into now is the breadth of what magic can do. Uh, like, what can it do? In, the, in some settings it can do anything, in some other settings it's very limited. For instance, one spell would utterly ruin the concept of a castle, and that is teleportation. If you can teleport your troops behind the walls that are supposed to stop people from getting through, it, castles are useless. No point in building one at all. Ah, but what if there are limitations on the teleportation? Well, then maybe. I mean, if it's line of sight teleportation, well, it depends. Sometimes I say it's line of sight, but because, you know, we might appear in a wall, but that's me. That's saying they can actually teleport to places they can't see. It's just more risky. But if there is a proper limitation, I cannot. It's physically, magically impossible for me to teleport where I can't see. Well, that's a bit more of a workable limitation. You could only then teleport on top of the castle walls, not behind it, or in the keep where the lord or king is to kill him. So, you know, castles still might be a bit useful in that regard. Unfortunately, the issue is we could uh, dwell on this subject forever because if we were to say, let's look at D&D, okay, and the huge amount of spells that are available in Dungeons and Dragons, you would need to almost take it by case-by-case -case basis. Okay, that killer cloud, cloud fog thing that you can just make poison, well, that would really screw up a castle. Magic missile! I got a plus nine dagger that does plus five to ogres! But we're not fighting ogres, we're trying to attack a castle! Lightning bolts from heaven, summoning monsters in the middle of the bailey that can just rip people apart. So magic, yes, can very much screw up uh, the purpose of a castle. But there is another point that could kind of bring castles back into the realm of usefulness in a world with magic, and that is if there exists in the world magical defences that are powered by magic. Is there a magic that can nullify magic? We're talking about counter spells or wards. And there are actually a lot of fictions like David Farland's uh, The Rune Lord series. Magical defensive wards are placed on castles, offering the castle magical-like defences. So, so that is an option, okay? That could make it work quite well. And indeed, the kind of best option in my mind, because magic is such a dangerous thing when it comes to having your castle, you know, protect yourself, 
The best option would be to have some kind of spell or enchantment on the walls or the grounds that just nullifies all other magic completely, which means the defenders can't use magic, but then the attackers can't use it, and that makes the castle like as effective as it would be without magic. And if the castle is built properly, well, their whole purpose is to defend against physical attacks, okay? And they do a really good job against that kind of stuff. So yes, would a castle still be useful in a world with magic? I think absolutely if you can nullify the magic and take it out of the picture. If you can't, well then castles are kind of screwed. What about dragons? That's actually a great question for anything, you know? This is a souffle, ah, but what about dragons? Dragons change up the scenario in everything. This is a tank, ha, ah, what about dragons? This is my daughter's dance recital, ha, ah, but what about dragons? We should be willing to ask that question in any scenario in life. What about the dragons? The dragons have feelings? We can't forget the dragons, people! Hashtag what about the dragons? Well, really, uh, this question is actually something that's a bit broader than just dragons. It's really talking about magical or fantasy-like creatures, because uh, ogres, they, they'd be pretty done, well, depending on the size of ogres, because that changes in all different types of fantasies. Lord of the Rings-esque, kind of. Well, they're trolls. Ogres and trolls. Gee, they, they get mixed up so much. A troll from Willow is very different to a troll from Lord of the Rings. Well, of course, any kind of fantasy creature that is uh, more formidable than, you know, an average human or indeed like an elephant or something like that can uh, throw a spanner in the works in regards to castles. If the creature is so large they can just destroy the wall, well, you're in a bit of trouble unless you build a really, really, really big wall like they did in Attack on Titan. Still, it would be too long to look at every single fantasy creature, so we'll focus on the most popular ones. Dragons. Well, of course, yes. Flying and fire breathing. Two big issues in regards to castles. Now, I actually tend to think the uh, flying is actually probably a bit more of a problem for a castle than the fire breathing. The fire breathing comes into the same thoughts I had in regards to fireballs. Unless there is actual penetration where an explosion can get in, you know, the uh, stone a bit, it's only going to do surface damage. It would certainly hurt the defenders on the walls, but there is kind of a way, if, if you were in a setting with dragons and you knew, you know, dragon fire was a problem, and again, it comes into how powerful the dragon fire is. If the dragon fire can melt stone, like in Game of Thrones, well, yeah, why bother building a castle? But if the dragon fire is just like a flamethrower, well, if you're an individual, you'd be in trouble, you would need some cover from it. But flamethrower-like fire would not be able to melt stone or destroy a castle. So then, if you were to actually build a proper, you know, roof cover out of stone, so you make a bit of a vaulted ceiling on top of the roof, and you still have your matriculations and yarrow slits and stuff like that to give you a proper defense, well then you could have a castle that would be able to defend against dragon fire quite effectively if the dragon fire can't melt stone. So in regards to Game of Thrones, and I'm not up to date on all the Game of Thrones lore, uh, and I don't know how prevalent dragons were, and it was the Targaryens that had the dragons on their side, I believe. It would depend on how likely you would be to get attacked by the dragons, and so if you don't have to worry about the Targaryens, well then your castle could still be quite effective against ground troops. Regular medieval level, uh, you know, technology, type of aggression. Castles are great at defending against those type of things. But if you're always going to be attacked by a dragon, there's no point in having a castle. It doesn't make sense that they exist in the setting. If the fire can melt the stone. If not, you know, there's ways to defend against it, but then you have the problem with the flying thing. Flying can be a very big problem, which is why I think it could be even a bit more of a problem than the dragon fire, because you can just lift, you know, several men over the wall at a time. There could be ways to defend against it, but if you're able to get enough people over those walls and, uh, you know, drop down right down on top of the attackers, you're kind of screwed. And then there's another problem on top of it as well, and that is the dragon being able to lift up heavy rock kind of boulders, depending on what weight like they can lift in flight, and then just dropping it on people on the walls or through the roofs. You see, walls can defend against large boulders thrown at them quite effectively. They won't be able to stand up to constant pummeling, in my assumption, it's actually a bit hard to find out exactly how effective trebuchets were, but I get the impression, as I've said in other videos, they're not as effective as people think. Their castle walls are not easy to demolish. Castle roofs, on the other hand, that's a completely different story. A boulder would easily crash through the roof and the several floors 
because it's just wood and that would enable you to drop other kind of things like a big pot of burning oil to set the entire thing alight. I get the impression the accuracy from just being able to kind of drop death bombs over the walls on attackers in the important parts behind a castle wall would be quite effective. The problem though why you can't do that with trebuchets is the matter of aiming and readjusting and the prevalence of return fire from the defenders on the castle. That could really screw you up if you are when you're trying to use a trebuchet, but a dragon, you know, not so much. They can fly pretty high. So in the end, when looking at, you know, magic and magical creatures or fantasy creatures like dragons, yeah, it really does come down to the finer points. And the only, you can't, I can't make a blanket statement saying if dragons exist, castles are therefore useless in every circumstance because it depends on so many variables. How powerful is the dragon flame? How prevalent are the dragons? Would you be expected to be attacked by a dragon when anyone tries to attack your castle? If the dragons are not very prevalent and uh, you're more likely to be attacked by a regular army, well then yes, of course, a castle is still useful. And the same goes for magic. It all depends on these fine little variable points. But I hope to at least have given you some insight to be able to look at it on a case-by-case -case basis. So when you want to decide if you're writing a fantasy, if you're making an RPG world that you're going to be game mastering or anything like that, I hope you could look at it and say, well, this is what my magic can do. Da, 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 da. This is what the mag fantasy creatures are and they can do this, 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 and this. And then you making the decision, would that be effective against a castle? And then what changes could I make on a castle to try and counteract that? Because in terms of warfare, there is always an arms race between offense and defense. And so if uh, someone has found, uh, you know, in you know, magic or a weapon that can really hurt castles, generally people will try and look at the castle and say, what can we change about it to improve its defenses? And that's why castles existed a bit into the time period when cannons were around. We see star forts and things like that being made to kind of counteract that but what we have ultimately discovered is that the offensive capability of our weapons have far exceeded anything that we can try and defend against. We don't build castles anymore because castles are absolutely useless against nukes. And indeed, bunkers are pretty useless against nukes. The only way you can properly defend against a nuke is by having a place that you can hide that the enemy doesn't know where you're at. Because if the enemy knows where the bunker is and is able to send a nuke, it pinpoint accuracy right on top of wherever the bunker is, there's almost no depth that you can, you know, build that bunker to where you'd be safe. Or if there was, it's so deep that it's impossible to actually build the bunker there. And this gives a good kind of comparison for us to compare. If the weaponry in your setting or in any type of fantasy setting is getting up to, you know, nuclear kind of level, you can be fairly assured that castles would be absolutely redundant and useless in that setting if its purpose was to try and defend against those things. There you go, these have been my thoughts about castles in relation to magic and fantasy creatures such as dragons. I hope you've enjoyed, please do share your thoughts if you think I've missed something out or if you feel that there might be something else that could be a big problem for castles or if you could change something in castle to make them more effective against the things I've mentioned. I look forward to reading them, thank you for watching and farewell.